Photography is a way of listening, not just with your ears, but with your eyes, with your heart, with your entire being. It's my way of putting a face to the statistics. It's my way of asking questions. Photography's been my language. I grew up in the messy bits of Manila, in a house with about a dozen people. The confines of my world were within the four corners of that home. You take care of other people in order to take care of your own loved ones at home. To me, that's very central to being Filipino. I wasn't really allowed to go out that much because there was a lot of crime. Photography became a window to the outside world. It would become the window that I would climb out of. The deeper I go into the work, the more I realize that it won't really let you escape to anything. Photography is almost this confrontation. You have to be there to take that picture and you have to be fully present. It came up in a time where photography was really going digital. I could see these like great works and great canons, but I would see it from like the broken screen of my cell phone or, you know, like whatever shitty laptop screen I had. And I could imagine that there might be space for my work there too. Over the past few years, the images that have been coming out of the Philippines have been very bloody and very violent. The narratives can become incredibly simplified, but it's very important to be able to show the complexity when something incredibly violent happens in a neighborhood. How does care look like in those spaces? And I was very curious about what life looked like amidst all the death. I wanted to understand what form resilience took. I felt that that was still missing from the conversation. It allowed me to understand the situation from the eyes of those closest to it, too. When the big typhoons hit, women and girls wind up being displaced into the sex trade in the Philippines. Many of these women who've lost their homes were now taking shelter in these brothels, trying to rebuild their homes quite literally with their bodies. We met this woman, Jojo. She said, one night with a foreigner might be able to afford you hollow blocks for your house. Another night might help you replace the roof. People prey upon vulnerability. A lot of them are mothers and they have to provide for their children. There's not a lot of ways in which you can create opportunities for yourself no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how hard you work. The last thing I want is to further harm someone by portraying them in a way that is not honoring all the sacrifices that they've been through. You have to honor their path as they are letting you into their space and into their lives. If you are in the jails in Manila, you are every day being tortured. I can still smell the jail. When you enter that space as a woman, it's truly like an assault to the senses. There's no like space for yourself. Sometimes you have to wait six to eight months for a sentence that is max two months. You come into that story with a lot of fear. The authorities were saying I was too much of a liability because I was a woman. We're not equipped to help you should a situation arise. But I was not worried so much about my own safety because of how I was being treated by everybody around me. This work really shows you what hospitality might look like from people who have nothing and who are at the most dire of situations and in the center of a lot of true injustice.
bombs continue to explode civilian scatter november nineteen forty four japanese soldiers marched into the town of mapanike pampanga they pillaged the town they castrated some of the men and the boys and then they rounded up the young girls dozens of them were marched into this red house where they were held and they were repeatedly raped for days when i woke up i cannot remember anything i just look at my eyes were blood in the 1990s a group of these women gathered together and they decided to tell their stories demanding some sort of justice and they haven't gotten anything yet of the approximately 90 women who came out 27 of them are still alive they also still live within a few kilometers from the house where they were held and most of them have to to go back and see it all the time, you know, when they're just going through their day. The house where they were held is now overgrown with vines. A lot of them are growing gardens above this land that is laced with trauma. Roots from Ashes is really about how they rebuilt their town. What they went through isn't at all being honored in terms of history. It's being actively pushed aside. I wanted to understand intergenerational trauma and I found that interaction with these grandmothers to be truly one of the more formative moments, not necessarily in photography but just in myself as a person and in understanding my own history and in understanding the history of what really happened past what we learn in school. Because they are still alive and they are still carrying those stories. Marta and Apollinar, she's one of the Malaya Lolas. I took a portrait of her with a mosquito net behind her and her husband behind the mosquito net. She was talking about how it was traumatizing for him too, but how he supported her in that moment. I hold on to that picture a lot because I just remember how she walked with so much grace and so much kindness amidst all of these things that happened to her. She really embodied something that always felt out of reach to me, that I was always trying to grasp for, but couldn't quite hold. I had always defined myself when I was younger in opposition to beauty. I was a dark Filipino kid in, in a society that values light-skinned women. A lot of my colleagues in the industry are like, why, why are you diluting like, your body of serious work with something like beauty? What are you doing in Fashion Week? So that made me even more curious about it. I was asking people what beauty meant to them and how they defined beauty. And what I realized as I worked on the story was that beauty was just really a touch point for so many other things. I spoke with this transgender model, Kuei Tan, who told me that for her, beauty was an armor. It literally shields her from physical violence. Joanne Johnson began modeling when she was in her 60s. She grew up during the civil rights movement, and she seemed so sure of herself, of who she was, and what she stood for. She wasn't trying to be anybody else. I witnessed beauty become this vehicle where people can assert themselves. But then I also witnessed people who are trying to reshape themselves for someone else. We live in an age where people want to show this model life, this perfection. You want people to have you as their hashtag goals and that's just not not ever what I want for myself because I deeply see the gaps in where else I can grow. By the time I was done with it, so much of my own perspectives and my own unhealthy relationships with beauty just shattered. They helped me redefine what beauty meant for myself.
The eagle hunters are in Bayan Olgi in Mongolia. They're Altai Kazakh nomads. They hunt foxes and wolves and rabbits with their eagle. We met hunters who felt like the eagle was their child. This tradition of hunting with eagles really connected people in a landscape that is nomadic. It truly enables these teenagers to get to know their heritage and to embody it with eagle and arm. It connects them to the generations that came before them and connects them to the land that they live in, in a world that's being transformed by technology. We went to document the Golden Eagle Festival. The contest is really about having the eagle hunter unite with the eagle through a call and through waving a piece of meat, usually rabbit. But when it happens, it's just so incredibly, like it, it made me cry. For Zaman Bull, the eagle embodies her grandfather. When he passed away, she inherited his eagles. He was the one who taught her how to train the eagle, how to whisper to the eagle and have the eagle come back to her. That story allowed me to understand different formats of what childhood and coming of age can look like. I was such an awkward teen. They were like going out into the steppe in full gallop with their beautiful furs and an eagle. I was like, wow, that is, that is a childhood. What I've always loved about photography is the visibility that it can give people. To see a certain issue that might not have a presence in their consciousness until a photograph enters. Photography has given me a way to raise my voice, to contend with the things that matter to me. And the more I do it, the more I realize how little I know and how limited my vantage point really is.